Okay guys, uh, just real quick before we start this bow build video, I'm super excited to share that Hoyt uh, Helix Ultra and what I uh, did with it. But first off, we're doing a giveaway this month in June. And uh, well, I don't know. You guys want to win a spawning scope or, uh, well, Hoyt, we've got autographed Hoyt hat. We've got five winners anyways. We've got workshop sharpeners, day six arrows, all sorts of stuff. Just click the link in the description below right now. Just pause the video, click the link, and enter. It's free, absolutely free. We're going to choose five winners here at the end of the month. So with that, let's jump to the video. All right, guys. Today's an exciting day. UPS guy. Yesterday. Christmas came early. Last year he shot the RX-1, this year I'm going to the Helix. Back to an aluminum bow, I had a Nitrum uh, a few years ago and really liked it. So this is the first look, kind of excited. Oh sweet, nice little foot patch. Wow, that looks slick. Yeah. So that's the Helix Ultra right there. We finagled the deal and got First Light Fusion again this year. So pretty stoked about it. Oh wow, they even have that split already. Sweet. Right now I'm gonna shoot the Hybrid Hunter from Hamsky, and then uh, of course the Born Array Signature Tommy Hog 5 pin. So this has been my go-to site um, for as long as I can remember, probably 10 years now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that's what we got, got the Hoyt. It's gonna be 70 pounds. Um, I ordered this at 80% let off instead of the 85, so uh, legal in some of the states like Montana I know had some issues uh, with that 85%, so we're shooting 80% uh, this year. I'll set it up at 31 and a half inch draw length. Alright, so this is the ZT Pro, this is a number 3 cam. This goes from 30 to 32 inches I believe. 29 to 32 inches. I'm gonna, like I said, 31, 31 and a half, it depends, I might play around uh, I might go back to a thumb release, uh, the whippersnapper. Um, I've been shooting the spot hog uh, wise guy. Uh, and I go back and forth. I fight target ish, target panic a little bit. And uh, with a trigger release, sometimes it's for me, it's a challenge. But uh, we're going to play around with it, see which uh, release I like best on this bow. But pretty stoked to get this set up. So, first things first for me with my bows, I'm sorry, but uh, not a fan. So I just pop that off and um, what I'll do, I don't have any right now, but I'll stop by a sporting goods store and grab a tennis grip and throw a tennis grip on there. I don't like a wide plastic grip. The biggest thing why I'm doing that right now is um, when I'm setting my draw length, that difference of just that, that plastic can make, you know, it's a quarter inch or so. So it'll make a little bit difference. So it might be end up me shooting 31 or so instead of that 31 and a half. Um, first things first, gonna throw the rest on. Um, so this right here, uh, I'm gonna, it's a left hand and it's a micro tune. Um, I, I like the ability to have a micro adjust. So when we, we'll start with a paper tune and then do a walk back tune with it. Um, and then one thing that does get changed right out of the gate, um, I'm not a giant fan of their spring system. That's just me personally. I think it, I don't think it'd be a failure point. But uh, I'm going to take this off and uh, put a screw on there and then just go a straight mount. So I put a little Loctite on here, thread sealant. You just want to make sure whatever mounting screw that you've got, that uh, this and your sight, quiver, anything like that, put, lock, put Loctite on it. Uh, just don't want that to come loose. This one's already got a little Oregon Loctite, Oregon Loctite on it on the top there. All right, so we're gonna set up center shot here, and this is just for a starting point. What we'll do is after this, we'll shoot through paper, and then I also like to walk back to him. Um, so center shot, I go off limb to limb to down the arrow. It's actually pretty dang. Looks like the tips in just a little bit, so I'm gonna slide out the rest just a little bit to the right, and uh, gives us a good starting point. Like I said. This is where I like the micro tune. I can just, just barely creep that one out right there. So 
down the limb, through the riser, string goes through that riser, arrow, point of the arrow. So, like I said, this is going to be a starting point. Feels like it's going to be inside a little bit, but. Uh, Wes brought up a good point here. No. Sparkles, no. Just train it up up here. No. Uh, to look also down from the top view through the limb bolts to look at that arrow. Sparkles. <laughs> Don't mind my dog's name. My, my daughter picked it out. Sparkles. Lady Glitter Sparkles. For those of you who have kids, yeah, that was inspired by trolls. So we'll slide that out just a touch. It's pretty close. You can actually sight down the string too. So, like I said, this is just a starting point and when, uh, when we shoot it through paper and uh, do the walk back too and you'll be able to double check that center shot. So, um, what I'll do here, I'm going to tie in above and below that knock. And then for my, my rope loop, I actually don't have any rope loop material, so when we go into town uh, and press it, I'll get some more rope loop material. But this way my knock height, knock height's gonna be set. I like to tie in knocks above and below and then the rope loop itself. So um, here we go. It's just a simple, it's a simple overhand knot <clears throat> on the top, slip to an overhand knot on the bottom and walk, walk it out. And then I usually walk it back in to split the knots. Super easy. A little bit of tension to start. I'm going to tie, I'm going to work it my way out. And now I'll come back in and go in between the knots. What you do when you go between that, then you basically, that pinches that knot, you know, it lands in between, sucks everything solid. Um, that way you won't have one. <coughs> if you just went out to the end, you have a chance that you get one to unravel and then it unravel and back. So you just work your way back in between those knots. So same deal, I'm going to slide it up to the knock, tighten it there. How tight do you want that? on the knock um, just just I run it um, it's like just off of it you don't want to pinch it to where your arrow is gonna float you just want a little bit of wiggle room there that's definitely one I've made the mistake before where it's too tight and I've had issues and then I've had to retie that knock and just have a little bit of room there so yeah so if you look right here that's that's what I've got for wiggle room and is that arrows coming off that it's always going to slide up to the top when you're splitting them you just walk that back and forth like so and it gets that seated in um, this bow is similar axle to axle so I'm going to just going to hold this up to my knock point it's going to give me a good starting point for my peep height I slid where their uh, string splitter is and then I'm actually going to serve in my knocks before I have the peep in there that way uh, you can get on you can get them super tight on the string and then I'll slide those down to pinch that peep in place so same as tying a uh, knock point overhand back and forth I'll just get that so it's buried in tight. It's still in the middle of the knot itself. Mm -hmm. So work it back and forth so it's seamed in, and then just burn it and melt it. Basically, I'm gonna tie this uh, lower limb attachment on. This goes into a knot just like a same of a clinch knot is what it's called, like a rope loop knot. Clean hitch goes opposite, so come behind. 
Greenhouse, Hamski. All right, so I've got everything done here on the rest. We've got our center shot set. We have a start of a knock height. Um, I actually added some spring tension here because I am shooting a 600, that day six arrow that I'm shooting is right at 600 grains. Um, so I was getting some sag on that when it was at full draw. So to do that, I actually called Hamski and talked to them. There's an internal spring right here and you loosen those two silver set screws right here and you turn it uh, clockwise and then screw those back down. He did, he did recommend when you do screw it down to do it like tires and have one tighter than loose, you know, kind of work your way down versus just one tight because you can bind up that bearing. So that was definitely a good tip that I learned today. We're basically ready to shoot it less. I don't have any rope root material. I need to get a peep installed. You can actually tune a bow without a sight, but I am going to throw my sight on right now and set uh, my second, third axis. Once I get an arrow on there at full draw, we'll set the third axis, but at least get the second axis set and uh, go from there. So first things first, I personally like a smaller housing. So this is the, they call it the MRT. It's a multi-ring technology. In different light conditions, it'll help you see that circle a little bit better. I'll probably run a 3 16 peep on it, but um, it's set up with a five pin. So you've got two greens, a yellow, and two greens. Those are 019 pins, and then the very bottom's an 010. So that's uh, kind of helps. That'll be the floater pin that I'll actually use for a slider, so beyond 60. So just did a quick deal, mounted the uh, scope housing up switched out the MRT to the smaller diameter. Um, we'll try start with there depending on my peep size. Like I said, to play around with that. Um, <clears throat> and this is our Born and Raised Signature Series. So we sell this on our site. You guys can check the link in the description below. Um, and it's basically the Tommy Hog Born and Raised Edition. And it's the way the pin configuration. So Trent, Trevor, Steve and I have all shot this four or five pin Two green, a yellow, and two green. It's 20 through 60, how we set it up. 40 yards is the yellow pin, and then that bottom pin's the 010. We've all shot that same pin uh, configuration for a lot of years and, and uh, really, really like it. So if you guys are interested, check it out on our store. Uh, it'd be awesome to have you guys rock a born and raised site. Well, it's about all I can do right here without a, a bow press. So we're gonna run into town to Waldron's throw a peep in here, press it, and then I'll probably uh, maybe tie in a loop there and just shoot it through paper, um, just in case I need to play with the cam timing at all. Um, that's the only thing that really that I really need to press for again. But finishing touches, I got my old trusty uh, leather leather wrist sling, and then uh, our spider born and raised stabilizer. I shoot a 10 out, or a, I shoot a 10 inch stabilizer, so this balances out pretty nice on this bow. The only thing else that I'll uh, have to pick up is a tight spot quiver. So we're here at Waldron's. I actually worked here from the age of 15 until I was like 23, 24 years old. So uh, this is kind of what I learned about tuning bows and shooting them and all that. Um, so here through the peep in uh, on the press and the last thing I got to do is just tie a rope loop and then we're going to go shoot it through paper. So first things first, I'm just going to check, I uh, got my rope loop on, it's a little bit longer than what I like, but I'll, I'll shoot it this way, see how it goes. Um, going to check my peep height, peep height's good, I'm going to lock that in, and then, uh, then we'll start shooting it through paper. I think it aims like beautifully, just a touch high. We're good. So for uh, sliding those knock or the peep ties that I do, you just take an old pair, an old knock, flatten that, so you get a tip to grab on. You just slide it on the string.
<laughs> Old Indian trick. Old Indian trick. I'm shooting the same arrow uh, that I did last year. It's a Day 6 250 shaft. Um, I don't remember what length these ended up, but they tune really good on that RX1. So I'm going to start here, um, shoot it through paper, see what we got. So for me, honestly, paper tuning, it's a snapshot at a given distance, but uh, like a five to six, seven feet is a good starting point. Um, by then it should have somewhat of recovered out of the uh, bow and uh, it's just going to give us a starting point. For me personally, I like walk back tuning the best once uh but this just kind of it's like bore sighting a rifle so point right there and then these are your fletchings yep so i'm gonna bump my knock or bump my rest up just a touch and then um slide it out just a bit and that will clean up that tail kicking this way because basically what it's doing is it's misaligned right here so it's coming up and high so we're going to raise the point and move it in to straighten that up. This is definitely an advantage of a micro tune. I just moved that up maybe a 32nd or 64th of an inch start there. Here. Let's go look at the cam just out. So there's contact, so you can see right there. Top cam's out. Oh, I'll put a twist in the um, oh, control so. table. So we, uh, we ended up with a high tear, and I uh, bumped the knock, or bumped the rest up a little bit, and it didn't adjust anything in that tear. So we looked at the cam timing and sure enough, the top cam's out and it's a little slow in comparison to the bottom cam. So I'm gonna put a twist in this uh, control cable and uh, actually let out a twist on this control cable and then we'll let that cam come in at a faster rate. There we go. Got rid of the hive. It's just straight, straight right there. So uh, we got the, the cams timed, and we got rid of that knock high tear. So I always like to go at it one pro one issue at a time. So we got the height taken care of. Now our left right's going to be the driver, um, and this could come into factor of the spine and where I'm at. So I'm not going to get too worried right now if I've got a right tear I may have to play around with this length of these arrows and this cam in comparison to what I was shooting last year. I am going to just squeak this out a little bit looking over shooting it that my arrow is still on the inside a little bit so if I slide that out right it will help clean that up. We've got that paper shooting pretty good. Um, I, I bumped that rest out a little bit to the right. What we're going to do now we'll, we'll go head back out to the house shoot a walk back tune and uh, we're just going to shoot a vertical line and we'll just start walking it back, holding on the, holding my uh, left, right, same every single time. We'll just see if it starts walking left or right. And that's really kind of where you can start fine tuning that. And then once that feels good, then we can uh, bear shaft tune those arrows. All right, guys, so uh, made it back from Waldron's. Grab some uh, burger. W would you say that was the best burger in Roseburg? Yes. This, yeah, Granny's Mini Hut, if you're in town, hit it up. What we're gonna do right now, I'm just uh, getting this thing on a level. Uh, we're gonna do the walk back tuning. Got a little hooky low on the top, but. Anyways, what we're gonna do, we're gonna shoot an arrow and we'll start at like five feet, seven, and just kind of walk our way back every couple feet and make sure that that's in line. If that's good, then our center shot's good to go. So. so you guys can see, progressively, I was basically putting my that pin right on the edge of this line, so I'm not floating it, but straight on the edge. 
started here a little bit further and a little bit further out moving out to the right so what that's saying is my rest is kicked out too far so opposite of paper you're looking at the front imp arrow impact versus the back of the arrow so we're going to move my rest in just to put touch to the left and it should uh, clean that up the one thing we kind of talked about paper tuning it's a good bore sighter for me but it's not the end all tuning in my opinion because it is just a given distance and i think where this walk back tuning french tuning you get a better picture at some given yardages what i use is this i level it up and then use you know right now basically that vertical line that wire line is what i'm using as the aiming <coughs> aiming point and this is the best way too, I think, to sight in, in my opinion, is using a line like this where you're not worried about, you know, using a line versus a dot to sight in. You're going to get your windage figured out. You're not worried about height at all. You're just worried about left, right. It's a great way. And then I'll also use a, a horizontal line to get my yardages, uh, you know, 20 through 60. Because that way, you instead of aiming at a dot, trying to be in the center of that and worried about left, right, you're just worried about trying to stay horizontal. So I was aiming at the right edge of this the whole time. So from those given distances, you could see how they were walking out. And now I've got perfect up down. Feel good about that. So ready to shoot some arrows this thing at distance. All right guys, so this is the bow build on my Hoyt Helix Ultra. Um, I'm super stoked with this bow so far. Like I said, I haven't got a ton of arrows through it. I'm excited to kind of get back in that aluminum bow riser feel. Um, it's nice, stiff. Um, and my initial assessments right there super easy to tune got the timing changed on it got the uh, the height knock high left or uh, tear out of it and then just walk back tune that with six arrows and uh, I'm ready to go shoot this thing at distance so if you guys like this kind of tech stuff we've got more coming this summer we've got broadhead reviews We've got some uh, more arrow tests here, um, bare shaft tuning with the day six arrows. Also, 100,000 subscribers. It would mean the world to us. If you guys watch these videos and like them, just hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. It's just like giving us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit the bell notification. That lets you guys know when we got a new video coming out. Um, we're having fun with it. And uh, we're looking forward to this fall elk season. This year is going to be pretty, pretty special to us as all of them are, but this year especially. With that, I'm out. See you guys later.